Welcome to Plant and Water. Uh, on today's episode, we have a special guest with us. is uh, Joshua Dykes. He is our preacher intern uh, this year. Uh, for uh, He's actually more focused on our missions. Uh, he's really helping us with our work. And we're really looking forward to our discussion today. We're going to talk about being humble or being humbled. Uh, and what is the difference? And we're going to be looking at Nebuchadnezzar uh, based on that. And uh, thankful that uh, the three of us can can discuss that. Um, so, if, uh, in fact, we're going to look at Daniel chapter four, and we're going to look at verses twenty-eight through thirty-seven uh, to begin. And so, um, JJ, could you read verses twenty-eight through thirty-three for us? Sure. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, and at the end of the twelve months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, "It is not." This great Babylon, which I have built by the mighty, by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty. While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagles' feathers, and his nails were like birds' claws. Well, there's a lot going on in, in this passage, uh, and, and Josh, you actually you came up with this as, a, as the the concept for our, our discussion today. Um, why, why did you feel this was an important uh, passage for us to look at? Well, I feel like this is an important passage to look at because it uh, serves as a warning to us, I believe, of um, right. what can happen when we take pride in ourselves and we don't take pride in God. Right. Um, throughout this passage, we see uh, Nebuchadnezzar say, my uh, oh, yeah. my power, my majesty, my kingdom, um, the kingdom I have built, yeah. and he's giving my all the glory power. to himself. Yeah. And I just thought, how relevant is this to uh, today, where people put more glory in themselves than they do in God? Right. So, my, my job, mm -hmm. uh, my career, my my income, my four hundred one k. You know, yeah, I, I see that as well. Look, look at all that I've I've accomplished I've done um, this is my baby my stuff uh, so that 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 concept yeah is very practical for us today and I think it's interesting verse 28 says all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar there's a bigger context to this there's a second this is the second dream that Nebuchadnezzar has had what that verse 28 is referring to he he had this dream that he was going to be like the beast of the field like an ox eating grass for seven periods of time uh, that would pass away. And he's alarmed by it, doesn't know what's going on. It's because he had not humbled himself and that God was going to humble him. That gets us to our concept of are we going to be humble or are we going to be humbled? But I, I think it's I think it's interesting, verse 20, uh, 20 let's see, verse 37. Oh, no, it's not that. Verse 27. 27. Uh, at the end of the dream, Daniel tells him, this is, what this, this is what's going to happen. We see verse 28 says that it does. All these things take place. He's going to be humbled. But Daniel gives him an out in verse 27. It says, Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness. And your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. So he's saying, he's saying, King, would you listen to my advice? Break off unrighteousness from you. Uh, he's saying, show mercy. So in, in fact, I, I believe he's saying, turn off the fiery furnace. You know, the first dream that he has, he dreams that he's got this massive statue in his dream of four different sections. You've got the golden head, you have uh, a torso and arms of silver, and then you have, you have legs of, of, uh, of bronze, and then feet of, of iron, and mixed with clay. 
So you have this, this picture of four different kingdoms, Babylon being the first, the Medo-Persian second, Greeks, and then Romans. So that's the interpretation of his first dream. Well, all he hears is the golden head being his kingdom. Because the next chapter, chapter 3, he makes a 90-foot tall golden statue and requires everyone to bow down and worship it, including Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who do not. He then throws them in the fiery furnace. So we get this. This is probably the fastest overview ever <laughs> of the book of Daniel here. But you, we get this, this, this picture of, uh, of, of someone who obviously didn't listen to the dream. He sees himself as the greatest. He sees himself as, as who needs to be worshipped. Uh, and God sees him as someone who needs to be humbled. And that's why the second dream takes place. Uh, so he'd been told this was going to happen. And I think it's interesting, verse 28 says, All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of 12 months. So 12 months later this happens. I, I believe he did listen to the advice of Daniel. He was willing to humble himself, possibly turn off the fiery furnace. But then he's standing on the roof of his kingdom, and he looks out at everything, and like you said, my, my, my. My, 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 look at what my hand has done. And, you know, I, I think in history we find any time a king goes on the roof, bad things seem, seem to happen. Yeah, JJ, can you think of a time maybe when, uh, when another king goes on a roof and uh, bad things take place? Mm, yeah, David and Bathsheba. David and Bathsheba. When David goes up on top of that roof, he looks out at his kingdom. And, and remember, it's a time when all the kings were to go to war. He was supposed to be leading the armies. He stays home. He doesn't do the job he's supposed to do. In fact, he looks out on that kingdom, possibly doing the same thing. And he sees Bathsheba, and that's where he turns uh, to, to, to evil. You know, uh, so, you know, this, this can't be good. You know, and, uh, and you mentioned that passage in Matthew. It might be good mm -hmm. to... Yeah, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 23, verse uh, 11 and 12. Um, the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So we see this pattern um, mimicked in the New Testament. Um, the fact that as Christians we are called uh, to humble ourselves. We are servants of God. Um, and as humans we are all equal. There is no um, individual who towers above another because we're all seen as equal in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. So we need to be not prideful in ourselves but give God the glory in everything. Um, right. So that, that, that's the similarity uh, that I've saw uh, between uh, Daniel uh, and the pattern we see in the New Testament. Right. That's good. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we humble ourselves uh, before God um, or we're going, to, we're going to be humbled. I mean, that's what that's, that's saying. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. If I lift myself up, I'm going to be humbled. Uh, I don't... I would rather be humbled than be humbled. I think it's also interesting, what if they're giving out the reward for humility and you're chosen? Do you accept it? Right? Humbly accept it. I, <laughs> oh, as long as you say, I humbly accept it, you know, that, that makes it possible. So they can, someone might give out the humble award. And make you say, bless his heart. Bless his heart. But if you grab hold of that humble award and you say, yes, I am humble, eh, you're not. So that's a hard balance for sure. And I find it interesting that to 12, for a 12-month period of time, you almost see that Nebuchadnezzar took that advice. He cut off the unrighteousness, possibly cut off the furnace. But it's easy for, for that pride to rear its ugly head. And he then... It literally went to his head. Look at the kingdom. Look at all that I've done. Look at the glory uh, that 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 I, you know, of my majesty, uh, in essence. Uh, Peter talks about this. We need, we need to recognize Satan is also alive and well. The moment, was it he who thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. The moment I think that I have arrived, I am the best, <laughs> the fall is, is, is soon to follow. Um, uh, 1 Peter 5, 4 through 6, Peter is, is referring to this, and I've included verse 4, I think, for a very 
important reason. Okay? When the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive the unfading crown of glory. He's you. It's Peter is, is he's referring to the elders, shepherds. Uh, he's telling the shepherds they've got a chief shepherd who is, they are to follow. Um, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. And then he says, likewise, you who are younger, be subject to your elders. So, uh, and he says, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you. So Peter's telling the, the younger members of the church to humble themselves under, the, under an eldership who's humbled themselves under the chief shepherd. There is no one person who is in charge except Jesus Christ. He's the chief chief shepherd. And so notice God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Either way, we're either going to be humble or we're going to be humbled. I don't want to be opposed by God. That's where Nebuchadnezzar is. He is humbled by God um, for a for seven periods of time. What are what is the seven what is the idea of a seven periods of time? Uh, the idea of completeness. Okay, um, completeness. When the time is complete. Right. I think in our society, seven, uh, seven, seven, seven is the lucky, it's a lucky, lucky number, right? For like the mm -hmm. jackpot. Well, what you know, it was funny. Mary and I, our our anniversary, seven, seven, seven. Uh, I remember we were supposed to be June, uh, at the end of June, and. That didn't happen, and, and we just went to the next week, and it was July 7th, and we went to a devotional book, and it says, I, the Lord, your God, do not change. We were like, that's the day. Someone said, you're one of those. And I said, well, yeah, I'm one of those. We want to get married. I didn't think about July being the seventh month. So that's when it was it was randomly 777. Um, it's, it's the concept of complete, the concept of, of perfection. Uh, but in this case, it's as long as it takes for Nebuchadnezzar to learn to be humble. So it, it took a while for him, for him to finally come to his senses and realize, okay, I am not the great I am. I am it's not about me. It's about God. And, uh, and so we're going to read Daniel 4, uh, 34 through 37. Who would like to take that? I'll do it. <clears throat> At the end of the days, of I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever, for his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does according to his will among the, <clears throat> the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of earth. And none can stay his hand uh, or say to him, What have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of the kingdom, of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor returned to me. My counselor and my lord sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, for all his works are right, and his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. This is the last thing that we hear Nebuchadnezzar say. I mean, to, he to hear him say that at the end, for all his works are right and his ways are just and those who walk in pride he's able to humble. Uh, is Nebuchadnezzar speaking from experience? <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, uh, notice it says at the end of the days. That's referring to the seven periods of, of time. When it finally came to his senses, he lifts up his eyes to heaven. What got him in the mess in the first place? His eyes didn't look up, they looked out at all that he had accomplished, all that he had done, all of his glory of his kingdom in conquering the known world, right? He didn't look up, he looked out. So it, by being humbled, it caused him to, well, hit rock bottom. I mean, literally, he's like an ox eating the grass. You know, there's really nowhere to go but up. Sometimes we, it, it takes hitting rock bottom for us to recognize it. Um, you know, any, any thoughts on, on, on this? It's going to take, <clears throat> take some time if you're not humble. Just like Nebuchadnezzar. you got to have uh, patience with that person who's not humble. <laughs> you know, you just don't expect it to happen. Uh, and like 
anything you do that's wrong, you gotta have time and work with them and learn. And I think that's what God did with Nebuchadnezzar was, hey, you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn the hard way, but eventually you learn. Yeah. And so uh, I think in that he was taught patience as well. Right. Uh, to be humble. Right. What What is it? We're talking about the seven periods of of of, of time. Um, in in James one, where as verse two it says, count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, mm-hmm. that you'll be complete, lacking nothing. So what you said about patience, man, it's key. It's going to take time. So during that seven years of time, I need patience. But let patience have its perfect work. That's the perfect seven being perfection, the complete period, seven periods of time. Um, you know. The moment I'm in the middle of a trial, I want to throw that off as quick as I can. But, but James is saying, hold out. Don't give up. Hold on. And remain. There's a period of time that's, that's happening. God's at work here. Are we going to let him work? Are we going to let him work his magic on, in our lives uh, you know, during that time of humility? Uh, and it might be a time of humiliation or a time of humility. Either that's why it's important. Am I going to humble myself before his mighty hand, or am I going to be humbled under it? The choice is mine. The choice is yours. That, that's, oh, that, that's key. And that's, that's also what Peter was referring to about that choice in verses 7 through 11. Josh, you want to read that? Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the glory, uh, to him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, uh, and I believe New King James says, to him be the glory and the dominion. So the glory, I, I think it's interesting, Nebuchadnezzar was the one who said, look at my glory, look at what I have accomplished. But he's saying to, Peter's saying to him be the dominion forever uh, and ever. That's what Nebuchadnezzar said at the very end. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. For all his works are right and his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he's able to humble and he could say, me included. I'm speaking from experience here. So after you've suffered, verse 10, a little while, that's again, seven periods of time, the, perf- the perfection. You know, while we're going through suffering, God's at work in the middle of that issue. So, you know, how many of us face difficulties of various kinds? We're going to face these things. And if anything, God's at work. Are we going to be humble or are we going to be humbled? In the midst of them, uh, in God's time, He will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. But at the end of the day, are we willing to be humble, or are we going to be humbled? Thank you all so much for joining us today. I, you know, that's that's really all we uh, uh, we had for for discussion. Uh, but we want to just encourage you. If you've got any questions, anything we can do to to uh, uh, to encourage you, please feel free to reach out to Richard at DeerfootCOC.com, and uh, we will uh, we'll get to those questions. Uh, next Sunday, we're planning to have our question and answer uh, night, and we want to encourage you to, to reach out with any questions that you have. JJ, do you have anything else for us? That's it. Okay, yeah. well, thank you so much for, again, joining us. Until next time, have a great day. Have a good day.